Okay, gang, let's get started. Uh, so today's our review day for Friday's test. The test is on all the stuff since the second test. Uh, namely, uh, we got uh, sequences, and we got series, and then we got power series and Taylor series. So that's what's going on there. Um, so um, I am handing back uh, this uh, project here, um, and I will say, I just want to be really clear, uh, I was not as detail-oriented in grading this project as I was on the quiz and as I will be on the test. Um, <clears throat> on the quiz and on the coming test, I, I look for all I looked for and I will look for all of the test details, right? If you use the alternating series test and you don't say decreasing, you're losing a point. If you don't say the limit goes to zero, you're losing a point. If you don't say you're considering the absolute value of the terms, you're losing a point. If you don't say alternating series test, you're losing a point. I'm going to look for all of those. It's a very specific list. And I, I think I've given you that list. It's, it's the big chart on the first page, that reference sheet, right? But I'm going to look very carefully for all of the details for the uh, series tests. I looked very carefully on the quiz. I gave you the feedback on that. I did not look as carefully for these things on the project. It's, it's not that I didn't think it was important. It's that I have other things I want to do with my life. And I wanted to get this back to you today so that you'd have it, you know, like, uh, for uh, in time for you know like studying for Friday's test but uh, if if you see that I did not take a point off on this project for a mistake that you also made on the quiz and I took a point off on the quiz it's not because I don't think you know like it's important it's because I didn't see it because I wasn't looking as closely as I did on the quiz or as I will on the test okay so just make sure you show all the details all right so <clears throat> Let's take a look. Uh, so I said 66. I just want to cross something off at the bottom of 67 first. So on the bottom of 67, it says you can bring the test for convergence of infinite series and the Taylor series reference sheet. OK, the test for convergence of infinite series is the big table on the one side. And then on the back is the flow chart. Is it a P series? Is it a geometric series? Do the terms go to zero? So if you recall, um, I had decided that I wasn't going to allow any reference sheets on any of the tests, any of my reference sheets. You can still bring your own sheet. Um, but I changed my tune, and I let you use this thing on the quiz, and I'm going to let you use this thing on the test. <clears throat> but the Taylor series reference sheet, we've hardly even looked at it. it. It is currently the first page of the packet if you've ripped off the other first page of the packet. Um, but cross that thing off on the bottom of 67. You're not going to use it. Like I said, we've hardly looked at it, so you probably won't even miss it. Um, but uh, anyway, that should not be there. And the same thing is true on page 66. Cross off Taylor series reference sheet. So just to confirm, <clears throat> you can use the uh, test for convergence sheet with the big chart and everything else on the back. And you can use your own reference sheet, but you cannot use that one. Okay. All right. So very briefly, um, subject areas for the test, series, series, and more series. So specifically, uh, sequences, writing a general term and finding limits. I just want to point out, it has been a long time since we looked at sequences. It was one class, the very first class after the second test, we looked at sequences. There is a question on this test Friday about sequences. Almost all the test is about series, adding stuff together. But there is a question about just a list of terms in a sequence. So make sure you go back to that section and take a look at it. Series, I want you to be able to write the general term uh, like you did on the project a bunch of times. I want you to be able to use the convergence tests. Deciding which one to use is, uh, is an important piece of that puzzle. Um, <clears throat> and writing out all the details. <clears throat> uh, there was uh, special formulas that I want you to know for the geometric series. There are two of them, two formulas, yes? <clears throat> the A over 1 minus X, you probably know really well. What was the other one? Yeah, 1 minus x to the n. You guys remember the other one where you're adding a finite number of terms? <clears throat> the a over 1 minus x is adding infinitely many terms. I also need you to know the finitely many ones. It's more complicated. Put it on your reference sheet just so you have it there. Then we talked about power series, finding the interval and radius of convergence, including the endpoints. That is what you did five times on the project. And then uh, most recently, we've talked about Taylor series. I want you to be able to find them from scratch, meaning half a dozen derivatives, divide by the right factorials, tack on x to the power. But I also want you to be able to find them by using techniques from our last class on Monday, where I'll give you a particular Taylor series for a function and ask you to build a related Taylor series, not starting from scratch, but just using the one that I've given you, just like we did last class. 
Okay, uh, things to know about the test. You can use a non-graphing calculator. I will loan you one if you don't have one. You can bring a one-page reference sheet of your own creation, both sides. Uh, anything you want on there as long as it's created by you and not a photocopy of something somebody else made. And as I said, you can use that reference sheet that you used on the quiz. <clears throat> okay, there are uh, other study resources on the very next page. You can check that out. Uh, we're going to start early if you want more time. So our window is going to be 8 to 10. So come early if you are worried that you might not have enough time in the hour 10. It's written to be an hour long, and if you finish in less than that, you leave. It's fine. But come early if you want the potential for more time. Okay, uh, there is a reading assignment for Monday. It's down below. Um, it says we're going to watch a fun video. Let's not do that. We're going to we're just going to practice hardcore series stuff today. Any questions for me? <clears throat> okay, um, I think. Oh, uh, there was one thing I wanted to say. Uh, just thinking about the projects that I graded and handed back. Um, <clears throat> Some folks are still having some trouble with some of these limits as n goes to infinity. And this is important for us because every ratio test starts with that, right? So uh, and, and limit comparison tests start with that. So we need to make sure that we're comfortable with the basics of these limits. So I will just remind you, um, not going to go over everything and dominance and all that stuff, but um, but I, I need us to be really good. Polynomial over polynomial is so common for the limits that we're interested in. What's the, um, uh, what, what matters top and bottom? What, what's the only part that matters? What is a leading term? It's all we care about, right? And so um, if the degree, you guys know the word degree, right? Degree is the highest power, whatever the highest power is. So if the degree on top is bigger, and the degree on the bottom, what is the limit? It's infinity. Or maybe negative infinity. Either way, it doesn't matter. Right? If the, if the degree on top is bigger, then limit is plus or minus infinity. <clears throat> okay. Um, next case. If the degree on the bottom is bigger, what's the limit? What is it, Nick? Zero. Okay. The degree on the bottom is bigger, the limit is zero. What's the only other case? When they're the same, and that comes up pretty darn often, and some of us are kind of missing the boat a little bit on it, so let's make sure we get this here. Uh, this is the most complicated one. If the degrees are equal, then limit is it's the fraction, right? Like we're just looking at the leading terms, but it isn't just enough to look at the powers and say, oh, they're the same. You have to then look at the coefficients, right? So uh, it's kind of a complicated way that we have to write this, but it's just, the, the, yeah, it's just the coefficients. So yeah, it's the, uh, let's say it's the quotient of the coefficients. Quotient of the leading coefficients. <clears throat> After I retire from teaching, I'm going to make a rock band. We're going to call ourselves the quotient of the leading coefficients. It's going to be so cool. Don't steal it, Nick. I know you're a musician. Quotient of the leading coefficients. Okay, one example of each. Um, so if I had, uh, I don't know, uh, 3x to the fifth minus 2x squared plus 7 over... Um, 4x to the fifth plus x to the eighth. Uh, red, purple, or blue? Which case is that? That is purple. It's tempting to say blue. Intentionally shuffled around the order on the bottom, right? 
x to the fifth, x to the fifth, you might not look at anything else and then you'd miss it, right? The degree is eight. It's not necessarily in order. So what's the limit here? This one is zero. Bottom wins. Something pretty big over something massive goes to zero. Okay, that's fine. Uh, next up, an example, um, 3x to the fifth minus 2x squared plus 7 over 4x to the fifth plus x to the four. <clears throat> Red, purple, or blue, what is that? That is blue. Leading uh, the degree is the same on top and bottom. They are both an x to the fifth. So it might be tempting to say the limit is one. It is not one. What is it? Three fourths. The quotient of the leading coefficients. Three fourths. This one goes to three fourths. Okay, one last example we'll squeeze in here. Uh, 3x to the fifth minus 2x squared plus 7 over uh, x to the 4 minus 8. <clears throat> what case is that? What color? Red, right degree on top is bigger. So what is this limit? In this case, it's infinity. If, if I put a negative there, it'd be negative infinity, but it hardly matters. I mean, uh, this one goes to infinity, right? That isn't the only thing you need to know about limits going when n goes to infinity, because there might be something attached to any of those fractions. Might be a 2 to the n on the top or a 2 to the n on the bottom. Right? Um, but still, we need to know what the polynomial piece is doing, and then we can bring in whatever else is not polynomial. Any questions about our limits there? OK, so I think that's about all uh, I have to say. So you're going to prepare however you see fit. Uh, practice problems are a good source. Uh, homework problems, the quiz that you got back. If you made any mistakes on the project, there's a good time to fix them. You're not going to get points back here, but I don't want you to lose points on Friday's test for the same mistakes you made on the project, OK? So uh, raise the flag, and I will walk around.